Hi, I'm Hardy Clark, and this is my wife, Karen, and we've been married for 13 years. Race was not really an issue when we met. I know I had never dated anybody outside of my race before, and I don't think he had, but like I said, we just had just a commonality between each other, so I think we kind of hid it for a while. You know, I didn't tell my friends too much, and I don't think he told his. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there was, there was a, a small group of common people that we kind of worked with, uh, but I, I think for, for a while it was, it was just kind of just, just us, and that was, uh, was kind of, my attitude was it's, it's kind of nobody's business. My family did not take too kindly to me and Hardy getting married. In fact, my mom was livid about the situation and she actually stopped speaking to me for a while. So she didn't come to my wedding. She, did, she just didn't talk to me for like about the first year. And then finally. It was that long? It was. Yeah. It was yeah, it was. A year. I remember going home for um, Thanksgiving and I was getting off the plane and she showed up at the airport with my sister-in-law, but she refused to speak to me. She refused to even look at me. And every time she addressed me, she addressed through my sister-in-law, but not, she did not speak to me directly. <laughs> so it was a pretty bad Christmas at that point, you know. She might have said a few words, but they were always spoke to my sister-in-law and not directly to me. But after a while, she kind of, um, you know, she came around. I mean, she loves him now, but <laughs> 13 years later. <laughs> It just took a minute. There we go. <laughs> Karen's mother's actually from New Orleans, and we went up to Chicago for the holidays several years ago. And when when we got to the house, it was it was late at night, and we'd been driving, and it was cold outside. And opened up the back door, and and this strange strange odor kind of came come waf wafting out the back door when we opened it and and it was it was Karen's mom and, and she had a, a big old pot of chitlins on the stove <laughs> it was Christmas and uh, there's uh, Karen's niece her fiance at the time he's actually uh, white as well and so we we both got dared to to eat eat the chitlins and so we uh, we gave them a try uh, and that's uh <laughs> I don't need to try them again. <laughs> I got my fill. <laughs> I think dating outside of my race is very hard because of the initial differences that may take place. Um, there may be things that I want to do that he may not necessarily want to do because of that or places that he may want to go that I don't all of a sudden feel safe, you know, going to or you know, I have to think twice about going to. So it does, it does make a difference. And then too, in the beginning, when you're dating, you do kind of worry what other people will think. And so you may be less inclined to maybe go out to different places because people stare at you, <laughs> you know, wherever you go. And so that makes you uncomfortable, you know, just for the fact you're uncomfortable with just going out together and then to have people stare at you at that time too make it a little bit more so so I mean I know we probably had more pizza nights and movie nights at home than we did actually going out somewhere the hardest thing for me anyway not that it's come to fruition but I think when the kids arrive on scene just kind of the fear that possibly our relationship and bringing them into this world may make life hard for them in, in some way, somewhere along the way, because they're not white and they're not black. And I, and I hope the generation that they're coming up with now is, is in a better place than, than maybe our peers were when we grew up and my parents when, when they grew up and, and so on. I, I hope they're in a better place so they don't have to go through any of that. But I don't that's that that's something that, that kind of on my mind from time to time. Sydney will say different things to me. She says sometimes how, you know, 
they want to put her in a category or whatever and that's where she'll say you know well I don't belong in any one of those because I'm both and you know I'm glad that I'm both you know kind of a thing and you know we do we try to teach her from both perspectives you know and she liked the fact Hardy's 100% Irish and so she liked the culture of it and everything and then she liked you know the African-American part of it too so she embraces it and then Jace I don't think he really gets it too much he's always like well daddy's just a lighter shade of brown than the rest of us so um, yeah. that's just kind of how you know he looks at it just the fact that you know one person is with somebody from another race regardless of what it is I think ends up kind of being a big deal I know um, a lot of times you just hear different things, especially when there is um, a black guy who's dating a white woman or, you know, who are married. And, you know, there's a lot of stigma. I think that's kind of attached to that. But people are people, and it just doesn't matter what your race is. What's most important is the love that you share for that, for that other person. So if, you know, if they could see that, it's just like, well, you know, that interracial couple loves the same way that you love yours. It's not that big a deal. I mean, there's more and more people that are, are more comfortable with people of other other races, and so there's not a 100% chance, but there's a, a decent chance that, that if you're black and you have a black child, they may date somebody who's white somewhere along the way. Or if you're white and have a white child, they may date somebody who's black along the way, and it's okay. It's a... Uh, we 13 years and it's a beautiful thing so relax that that's the message <laughs>